of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And we pray today that the word of the Lord would fill your heart so that you may deliver abundant life to those around you. Yes. My name's Angela Madden. I'm here with Matt Cogley yeah. and we have a wonderful show planned today. It's going to be so good. Trust me, you do not want to tune off of this because we're going to go through some powerful, practical ways and knowing how to memorize scripture to attack anxious thoughts, negative thoughts. We've got a great guest who's part of the author of this book, Dwell Differently. Her name is Vera Smits. Man, overcoming negative thinking with the simple practice of memorizing God's truth. Listen, That's be good, Angela. His word is a sword, Ooh, let's go. dividing bone and Cutting. marrow. Let's, let's go, go. Yep. spirit and truth. So today, while you're watching, you're gonna learn how to combat negative thinking and immerse yourself in the word of God. You're also gonna learn some groundbreaking approaches to memorizing scripture that will ultimately transform your mind and your life. And you'll find out how just one word from God can be more powerful than any other. It's true, like when we get to focus on the word of the Lord, yeah. it is the game changer. It's yeah. life-giving, life-breathing. Yeah, well, it's the truth. Yes. I and mean, the word of God says it's a living and active, like you mentioned. Yes. And sharper than any two-edged sword. I'm yes. curious to know. Yes. Growing up. Yes. Did you have to ever do like memorizations of Bible? I verses? didn't, Matt. But you know what? What's funny is my youngest does wow. JBQ Junior Bible Quiz. Okay. And hun me, she is Mia. She can memorize entire passages. She will tell you fine details what? of every story. L like eats the word. Like loves wow. the word. Uh -huh. We need to get her on the show. I wish that I could do it. Me too. We like do. we need that anointing to pass over to many of us. Did you have to learn memor or memorize I scripture? I didn't, but I grew up in the assemblies and okay. we did uh, competitions. Yes, like, like fine, fine arts. Art, fine arts. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, okay, for viewers at home, if you want to know, I was in a rap group. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I went to the nationals for it, baby. Let's go. Let's you would never know it thinking about it. <laughs> it was, Wait, it was did awesome. you do any original Rap songs? Oh yeah, you best believe. Oh my, there's an, anoint, there's an anointing in my rapping here. <laughs> You're gonna have to lay one on us one week. Yeah, yeah. For maybe Fun we will. Friday. No, yeah, I yeah. think Neil's gonna have to make that happen. No, Neil, let's not make that happen. <laughs> let's, make, let's go to our guest. Hey, if you ever struggled <laughs> with negative thinking, then you definitely aren't alone. After all, the enemy's agenda is to steal, kill, and destroy. And one of those ways he tries to accomplish that is by filling our minds with negativity. Our next guest, though, has the perfect remedy to help us combat with negative thoughts and replace them with positive ones that focus on God's truth. Co-founder of Dwell Differently, Vera Smits, also co-authored her new book with her sister, Natalie Abbott. It's called Dwell Differently, Overcome Negative Thinking with the Simple Practice of Memorizing God's Truth. Vera, we're so glad to have you with us on Hope today. Guys, thanks for having me. You guys are too fun. I'm like, <laughs> let's go. What are we talking about? Are That's we gonna, right. Hey, yeah, let's it, do this. It's Friday. <laughs> the weather's nice. No, it's calling for rain. But we got we, you know, we to keep the joy level up here. You know? <laughs> let's go. I love it. Wait, I wanted to start our conversation off with something that you guys had said in your book that really blessed me. And it was God's words aren't just a self-help strategy. I think we've got to speak to that because I'll be honest, I might fall guilty of that at times too. You know, how do we break out of that cycle of only going to the word of God when we need help? Yeah, that's, that's something that um, isn't all bad, right? Like it is a good thing that when, when we are in a struggle or we're in a hole, like if we know to go to the word, that's beautiful. Yeah. But it's also wonderful to, in your high points, in your mountaintops, when you're in a good space to go and to learn truth that is going to be there when you need to go to the well. Mm. And so one verse that um, we talk about at the beginning of the book, it's, it's from Luke 6, 45. It's the first part of the verse. And it says, a good man brings good things out of the good sword up in his heart. Mm. And the idea here is that what we do in this book and what we do in our whole online community at Dwell Differently is we help you store up the good things in your heart one verse at a time so that when you are feeling anxious, you can call on truth to pull you up out of that pit. 
So it's, it's all about just storing up the truth for every, every situation. And it's not even only just the negative situations. That's what we talk about in the book, but like, I want words to say back to God when, he, when I am so overwhelmed with his amazing grace or the beautiful sky I'm seeing is to fill myself with his word. I mean, let's talk about that a little bit of the, the whole dwell differently. I know it's part of your passion to memorize scripture, make it real simple. I remember like we were talking earlier, you know, people grow up in, in Bible quiz. And I think there's this pressure growing up in the church at times to have to memorize scripture, right? And so it, it causes, you know, maybe the wrong thinking of why we need to memorize scripture. Could you speak to that mm -hmm. a little bit? You know, what are some practical ways that you like to memorize scripture? Yeah, you know, God's word, something that is so good about what you, you brought up is this idea of it not being just a self-help strategy. Mm -hmm. God's word also isn't just good words. It's not just helpful words. They're the yeah. actual word of God. Wow. If God spoke everything out of nothing with word, mm -hmm. can't it have the power to transform our lives? And so our passion really is that we believe that God's word is powerful and true and so we want to equip as many people as we can to know his word for our every need, for our every situation. For me personally, I used to write scripture on my wrist in Sharpie marker when I was in high school. I was an athlete, a pole vaulter, and um, I would memorize Bible verses while I was training and competing. And I actually went on after high school, was an All-American at Indiana University, and then trained to try to make the 2016 Olympic uh, Olympic games. Um, I did not make the Olympic team, spoiler alert, <laughs> but, um, after that season of training and competing and really like using this, you know, system of writing it on my wrist, I went into like a really low anxious season for about a year where I would wake mm -hmm. up. If, if any of you are dealing with anxiety, you're like, I know what she's about to say. You wake yeah. up at 2 a.m. and your heart is racing and your mind is racing. And I would call on scripture to basically put myself back to sleep. I would wake up in the morning and I would pour over the word because I was so anxious. I didn't even want to leave the house. And it was during that time that I really learned God's word is our daily bread. It is yes. the sustenance, sustenance for our life. And so at Dwell, we really just try to make it super easy and simple um, with a with a method that I promise you, if you try it out, if you've never been able to memorize before, you're going to try this system out. And I promise it, you're going to be able to memorize the verse. What are some of those practical uh, systems? I think we might have a couple examples to show, but that you like to really yes. teach that you're showing in this book that I really do believe will help a lot of people. Yeah. So we take the first letter of every word in a verse hmm. and we string it together in a design. So this design you're seeing right now on the left, you see these letters C-A-Y is how it starts. This stands for cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. First Peter five, seven. So we use the first letter of every word in the design so that when you look at the design, you're challenged to recall it instead of just reading the verse over and over again. Yeah. And the system really works. And what we try to do also at dwell is to create an image that really speaks the truth of the verse. So that verse is about anxiety. So you see these little birds kind of flying away. And the idea is like these mm -hmm. anxieties are coming off of your shoulders like birds flying away. So when you see that, you're like, oh, yeah, that one's about anxiety. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. I love that because I'm definitely a very visual person. I think a lot of times I learn visually. And what a cool way to do that. And, and I know even through Bible school, right? That's how, how they teach it, how they abbreviate it and break it down. It even works for adults, right? And I think sometimes for sure. as adults, we have, to, we have to break it down so practically. Can we talk about one thing here? I, was, I love that there's, okay, there's 11 Bible verses that I know you guys are focusing on through the book. It's, it's one thing to just read that one scripture, but it's another, right? Like you guys encouraged to read the full chapter, get the context. Why is that important to you? Yeah, you know, when we cherry pick scriptures out of the Bible, it, we're missing the richness of God's word. Yes, the context is important because when those words were originally spoken, they were spoken to a certain group of people for a certain reason at a certain time. And so when we understand that context, we can really like experience the full richness of the truth to understand how the Bible actually works together beautifully to tell the story of Jesus yeah. across 
every single book of the Bible. And so that's what our hope is, is that we're not just like pulling this word out and, and learning it. It's like we can, when we look at one scripture, guys, I promise you, when you really read the context, when you read the surrounding passages, you understand about the people, the verse like opens up and unfolds like a beautiful flower. And wow. as time goes on, even in your life, you'll start to, as you remember that verse years later, it, it, it will continue to unfold and be more beautiful to you as you experience the power of God's truth. I love that because God's word is infinitely layered, right? It, it's, it's alive, it's moving, it's active, and there's always more to discover. You shared a little bit about your you know, attempts at an Olympic um, start or, or whatever that would have looked like for you in pole vaulting, so you're a high level competitor. When we're talking about applying scripture in these moments where like everything's on the line and maybe you fail, you fall flat on your face, what does that look like for the one who is competing or who's just going through life and they've hit a really, really hard patch? How can they quickly re-center on Jesus and get back to that place of feeling that peace and, and strength from him through his word? Yeah, there's a verse that we memorize in the book. It comes from John 16, 33. And this is what I, I love about Jesus. Jesus, he endured the most, right? He was not a high priest who doesn't sympathize with our trouble. And so in John 16, 33, it's actually he's he's at having the last meal with his best buds. He can He knows where he's going. He knows he's going to be betrayed. He knows he's going to be denied. He knows that he's about to endure death on a cross. And yet he says to his disciples, I have told you these things so that in me, you may have peace in this world. You will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome yeah. the world. And what's beautiful about this is that Jesus in the midst of his trouble, like the worst trouble that any human has ever endured, he's saying, take heart. I have overcome the world. And what's significant about that is he's saying, I have overcome the world, and he's saying it before he dies and raises and is in glory with the Father. And so what I love about that is like when we are in our trouble, in the middle of it, and it feels overwhelming and terrible and like, what do I even do next? We can be reminded that we can take peace and take courage because Jesus ultimately has overcome all of the troubles of this world. He's overcome the world. Yes. Now, the hard thing about that is, is that some things in this world, like none of us are getting out of here alive, right? Like we will endure things that will not be made right this side of heaven. But eventually in heaven, when we follow Jesus and we accept him as our savior, God is going to make all things new. He is going to make all things right. He will wipe every single tear. And that's a promise that we can hold on to in our troubles, that we can have peace in this world, even though it's troublesome. That's powerful, Vera. I love how you've been talking about just Jesus. I mean, Jesus just spoke the word of God, right? Even many times he went back to the scriptures. And I know you love to encourage, you guys like to encourage in your book that obviously the word of God is not just for me, myself, and I. It's to get in us so that it can work through us, right? And I know even mm -hmm. we're talking about in our church being so intentional to share the gospel, to evangelize, to reach the lost. How would you encourage somebody that's maybe intimidated to to know how to share the word? Like, what does that look like for you on a day-to-day? -day? So something that I didn't get to mention earlier at Dwell, we, we have a monthly membership where you can memorize one Bible verse a month. And our whole idea is that one word from God is more powerful than a thousand words spoken by anybody. I can tell you this, when you wake up in the middle of the night and you are anxious, you are not recalling that Instagram post that you saved. Huh. You're, that doesn't come to mind. That famous theologian that you read about this in the book, like you don't recall their words, but you will remember, return to your rest, O my soul, for the Lord has been good to you, which comes from Psalm 116, 7. And so my encouragement or what we try to do at Dwell to encourage people is to memorize one verse at a time. It doesn't have to be like a thousand verses. If you can do that, great. But even one verse at a time has the power to transform your life. And one thing we do at Dwell that's really, really fun is we um, have a monthly membership um, where we send out temporary tattoos with these designs. So you wear the tattoo and we never, exp didn't, we didn't plan for this. We didn't know this was going to happen. Like we did it so that you'd have this memory aid right there on your arm and you can try and memorize the verse. Mm -hmm. We also do it with stickers if you're not into the tattoo. But I promise you, if you wear the tattoo, this is the coolest thing ever. 
People ask you, hey, what does your tattoo mean? It is the simplest way to share the gospel with another person. When they ask you, what does your tattoo mean? It's been just the coolest byproduct of memorizing scripture is to say, oh, actually this verse says, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. And the him in that is is God. And that's what I try to do is when I'm feeling totally anxious, I, I try to cast my anxiety on God. Do you know about him? Do you know about Jesus? Yeah. It's just a beautiful way to share your faith. I've even had, we've had members tell us that my kids shared their, their faith with their dentist in the dentist chair. <laughs> like just beautiful stories of how God can use something as simple as a temporary tattoo to yeah. advance his kingdom. Yeah. Well, clearly I don't have temporary tattoos. You know what I mean? <laughs> you got they the are conversational deal. pieces. I will agree with you on that one. Yes. I, I, I know we're, we were, I wasn't going to go this way and it might be a little off topic, but I'm just thinking about, you know, we were talking earlier, you're a mother of three and three boys for that matter. How do you use scripture as a mother daily to help with all your stress? Yes. And really, I mean, it's honestly to be an example, even to your three boys. Yeah, you know, what's interesting is that my middle son, who's four, he actually taught me Psalm 23. We have this beautiful, uh, all of Psalm 23 designed on this sheet for kids to, to help them memorize scripture. And I really was, he was three, and I really wasn't thinking like he was old enough to, to memorize all of Psalm 23. But he kept bringing me the sheet at night, be like, Mom, can we do Psalm 23? Mom, can we do Psalm 23? It's because of him that our whole house has memorized almost. Me and my husband have, my three, my four-year-old has, our seven-year-old still working on it. We've memorized all of Psalm 23. And the number of times we have used the words, the Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. What does that mean? It means I have everything I need when I have God. Yes. Like my kids know that truth. And it's from just these little images of them using the first letter of every word to memorize the scripture. Or he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters as a mom who gets stressed out and <laughs> overwhelmed to remind myself and to see that image of where God is leading me beside quiet waters. Like what a beautiful thing to remind my soul in the day when things can feel pretty hectic. That's so good. Hey, Vera, we, we've got one minute left with you. Would you mind maybe just even praying for our viewers that they would get wisdom and revelation from the word of God, that it would become alive to them today. Yes. Lord, I just thank you so much for this opportunity to share about your goodness. You are so kind to us and so good uh, that we can open our Bibles and meet with you. And Lord, I just pray that you would meet each one of these view viewers today in their walk. I pray they'd be encouraged to be in the word. I pray that they might find one verse to speak to their one need, God, and, and that they might memorize it yeah. and know it so that it might transform their heart and their mind. I pray protection over their mind. When we talk about negative thinking, Lord, we know that there's a barrage of it. So God, I just pray protection over these viewers. I pray that you would meet with them and we just thank you for your son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Bear, thank you so much for joining us. I mean, I just wanna uh, encourage everybody, get their book, Dwell Differently, Overcome, negative thinking with simple practices of memorizing God's truth. Vera, it was so great to have you with us on Hope Today. Thanks for having me, guys. Well, hey, stay with us because when we return in 60 seconds, we're going to look at a verse that explores how important it is that we fill our heads and our hearts with God's goodness. We'll be right back. When we think of the New Testament disciples, it's easy to idealize their walk with God, but they were just like you and me. They needed a great deal of help to stay on the right path. We're excited to announce that Tom Hollis has a new devotional coming out this June. Spirit Walk follows the apostles as they attempt to follow Christ, as reflected through the book of Acts. Their experiences can be ours as well. All we need to do is follow the Spirit. Enjoy 40 short devotional entries and discover how the journey of the apostles relates to us today. Spirit Walk includes a daily verse, prayer, and space to journal your personal reflections. Be among the first to receive Tom's devotional, which releases June 12th. Ask for your copy of Spirit Walk when you give today. Call 888-665-4483 or go to ctvn.org slash donate. Thank you for your generosity. Hope happens here. 
God's word truly is a filling into our souls, into our being. And today we want to share a scripture with you. It comes from Luke chapter 6, verse 45. A good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart. You know, I love that scripture, Matt, because it speaks to two things. One, yeah. he stored it up in his heart. Yeah, powerful. And two, what's stored up in your heart comes out, yeah. you know? And so I think that it's really important. I love what Vera is doing, mm -hmm. getting people to really pour in and, and, and soak in that yeah. word of God so that when the world gets tough or when things are great, all that's coming out is that goodness of God that they've poured mm. in. Yeah, that's powerful. I, I love what you're talking about. It's what are you storing up in your heart? Yes. I think we've got to ask ourselves on a daily basis. I mean, the Bible even says that out of the abundance of the heart, your yes. mouth speaks. Yes. So, I, I mean, just even, I know we were wrapping up about being parents, you know, her with her sons, you with your daughters, mom with my kids, is I've got to think to myself on a daily basis, like what do I really have stored up in my heart? Yes. Because not only could it be, of life and death for me personally, but it could come out of my mouth, yes. teaching my kids to speak a certain way. Like I, yes. I remember I remember not too long ago, and all of us parents can probably relate that I'm having a conversation with my kids and out of my one kid's mouth comes like a certain phrase. And I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, that, that came from me. Like they're definitely repeating <laughs> what came out of my mouth. It's important what's stored up in our heart. It really is. It, and, and here's the thing, is that what is in your heart, if it's pain, it comes out. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's like, I think sometimes, Matt, we'll, we'll have these pain points or we'll have these things that we go through or the stress that we're experiencing. Yeah. And we think, I'll just, we'll just push it down. We're not going to deal with it. We're just going to push it down. Mm -hmm. But it always comes out one yeah. way or another, yeah. whether you, I mean, it is very blatant or it's beneath the surface of everything you're doing. So it's important to examine what is stored up in your heart. Yeah. And the easy way to examine that is to reverse engineer. What are you seeing in your life? Wow. If you see strange fruit, check the root. Yeah. You know, yeah. like if we don't expect to pull down an apple and go bite out of it and get orange juice. Yeah. No, we pull out an apple, we expect apple juice. So if we're believers and we're eating of his word and we're feeding on the goodness mm. of God, then that ought to be coming out of us. And if it's not in any given moment, doesn't yeah. matter what's going on that, yeah, yeah. in any given moment, yeah. we have to examine, well, what's really going on mm -hmm. in my heart? Yeah, well, isn't that the truth? I mean, the Bible says that your eyes and your ears are the gateway yes. to your heart. I mean, if you're watching this, you're watching something. Yes. Thank God you're watching this and not something else. But everything, even, even like they were talking about in their book, everything competes so much. Yes and grabs our attention anymore. Yes. So it's like, what's grabbing your attention? Yes. You know, where are your eyes fixed? Yeah. What are your ears open to? I remember even just at the gym, obviously I like, I like to listen to things. And I went through this moment, it's kind of funny, if I were to let you guys listen to what I hear at the gym, it's the most, probably the most boring <laughs> stuff. And people are like, how do you get motivated off of something like that, you know? So I tried to change it up one time, I was like, let me listen to some like heavier pump up music. And I'm not gonna lie, Angela, at the end of the week, I felt off. Mm. It's, it's, it, is, it is that true. Like yes. that's why when they say the word of God is alive and active, yes. it is true. What you hear, every word you hear really does affect you. And so yes. if I'm hearing something that has no eternal value, yes. I'm obviously, I'm, I'm, my life is off. Yes. But when it's full, I'll be something eternal, kingdom-minded, yes. my life is on point. Yeah, know? and it's that simple. I think you pointed that out, Matt, mm. is what you're listening to, listening to the radio or watching the news. Yeah. When you find that you're on edge and real aggravated with the world, mm -hmm. it's a good time to hit pause and yeah. listen to his voice. You yeah. know, I love the scripture, faith comes by hearing, Hearing, yes, hearing by the word. word of God. If you're lacking faith, if you're experiencing a lot of fear or anxiety, mm -hmm. you're, you're really concerned or, or you're, you're surrounded by darkness, it's time to tune into the voice of mm -hmm. God. Faith can only come wow. by hearing the word of God. Yeah. And I say it the other way, Matt, fear comes by the world's voice. So yeah. faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Yeah. Fear comes by hearing, hearing the world's voice. Yeah. So tune it down and turn up his voice. Yeah. 
I mean, even go a little bit further, faith is what pleases the Father. Yes. Without faith, it's impossible to please Him, you yes. know, so the Word of God strengthens and builds our faith on yes. a continual basis. I want to go, go back to something that we were ending with the conversation with Mary, because <laughs> as a father of three, mother yes. of two girls, yes. let's just end there, because yeah. I know, I know the viewers want to hear from Angela what she goes through on a daily basis. How does Angela go to the <laughs> word of God in those heated moments oh. with her daughters? Yeah, yeah, you know, when you're about to lose your mind because of everything <laughs> going on out here and then some, somebody pops off with an attitude or something like this. Listen, I continually, my girls will know, okay, mama, I, I take a deep breath. <sighs> yeah. And I said, thank you, Jesus. And I go straight to gratitude, honestly, wow. Matt. Like, so in those high pressure, and I'm not perfect at it, because uh -huh. honey, mama can pop off. You know <laughs> what I mean? <laughs> but in those moments, I go straight to gratitude. And I just begin right. to thank God for everything he's given me. God, mm. thank you, Jesus. Thank you that I'm here. Thank you that I can see my beautiful babies. Thank you, God, that you've given me this work to do. Thank you, God, that... Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And gratitude really recenters my attitude. Yeah. It's like one of those sayings yeah. from school back in the day, you know, uh, it determines your altitude, your attitude, and your gratitude. Yeah. But really, like, gratitude, I believe that's why scripture says, enter into his courts with thanksgiving. thanksgiving. Mm. You know, when you begin to give thanks, you will find yourself smack dab in the middle of his presence. Yeah. And that presence overwhelms you and takes you beyond the veil and fills your heart with that's peace. So good. Yeah. Thanksgiving can just shift an atmosphere, yes. right? I mean, there's, there's three things the Bible says that's the will of God, right? Yeah. It's to rejoice always, pray without ceasing, yes. and give thanks Amen. in everything. It changes yep. everything in your life. Listen, can I encourage those of you watching today, first and foremost, would you share this episode, share this with somebody because the word of God, it's alive, it's active, it's a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path. It's the one thing that can truly change somebody's life. I also want to encourage you today, take this time, don't overthink. Man, go to the word of God, not only when you need something, it's good. At least you're turning to his word. But man, can we challenge ourselves to grow such a hunger and a thirst for something that is truly everlasting, something that is tangible and that is only God's word. In those heated moments, in those stressful times, and especially when we don't know what to do, may we keep our eyes fixed and focused on the word of truth. His word does make everything just disappear, but his word brings freedom into our lives. God bless you. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I know God has some sore for you today.